you want me to, are you, are. Good morning. I'm Dexter Lessier, and welcome to our Holy Eucharist service on this December 20th. Our opening, oh, if you're watching from home, please go ahead and leave a comment about with your name or what state you're calling from, and we'll hope, try and share that towards the end of the service. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn number 66. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be the kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Meg, would you like to get the... We're waiting for the, the lighter for <laughs> to do our lighting of the Advent wreath. So. Now we normally have an acolyte who wasn't able to be with us here this morning. In your bulletin and those watching at home, we're going to say the lighting of the Advent wreath prayer. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. O Lord, you promised in your holy word to send your Son, Jesus Christ, as the Son of David, in your own Son. Reveal this saving grace. All our lives. Move our hearts to faith and obedience. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns, reigns with you in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
this. The Lord be with you, also with you. Let us pray. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, as is coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the holy unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning. reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The 
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and you will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and on his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. With our gospel reading this morning, it reads like some modern science fiction movie. We see the supernatural in a far more startling form than anything you'll ever see in a movie. But this is history. Here we have an angel appearing out of nowhere, announcing that a barren couple will have a child. Even more amazing than that, he subsequently announces that an unwed virgin will also become pregnant and to bear a child. And even more startling, that this child will be called the Son of God. And overarching of all of this is the announcement of God intervening in the creation to bring salvation to all of us. Imagine the faith required for Mary to respond to the Lord as Mary did. For a young, unmarried woman to become pregnant in that day was a serious problem. We need to appreciate what courage it took on Mary's part to agree to bring Jesus into the world. In Mary's mind, there could have been three very real fears. She could have been stoned. Having a child out of wedlock in her Jewish society was a capital offense. You could be stoned for it. And the Old Testament prescribed stoning for adulteresses. It was very much like the Sharia law in some Islamic countries today. She could have been set aside. Mary risked losing her fiancé, Joseph, who would naturally think that she had been sleeping around. It would have been very easy for Joseph to abandon her to her fate as an unmarried mother, and she would have to fend for herself. She couldn't have She could have given Jesus the stigma of illegitimacy, and her son would have the stigma of illegitimacy, a horrible birthright in those days. So, as we read the story of angel Gabriel announcing to Mary that she will conceive and bear a son, let's not forget how brave and courageous Mary was when she said, Here I am the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Now, I'm sure there was gossip about Mary being pregnant before they married. And if you ever lived in a small town, you know how true that is. Thank God for people like Mary who are willing to do what the Lord requires regardless of what it may be required of them. 
Imagine if someone asked you to give up something you deeply valued for a higher value. In a small Jewish town, a young girl was asked to give up her reputation for a greater honor, the favor of God, and she agreed. Still, the privilege she's being given is no small thing. She's to bear a child who will be called the Son of God. His kingdom will not only encompass Israel, but the rest of the world as well. It'll be a kingdom without end. And I don't think we can really comprehend the sort of feelings and thoughts that must have been going around in Mary's head at that moment. How can a mere human being give birth to a child like that? It's hard enough to understand how God would take on the form of a human being, but for Mary... It must have been unbelievable. We're looking forward to the coming of the Lord of the universe, the Lord of the ages. Here we are on the fourth Sunday of Advent and being reminded again that we too are chosen by God to herald the good news of Jesus Christ. We should rejoice in telling people about this child who was born of Mary, but was also the Son of God. We should be excited by the fact that God has become one of us, that God has revealed himself to us in the person of Jesus Christ. This Advent season, let's look for opportunities to tell our friends and neighbors about him. Then this good news of great joy for all people might be heard by those thousands who live around us who still need to hear that Jesus has come to be the Savior of the world that he's the son of God, and that his kingdom is eternal. Like Mary, we might be going through the most difficult time in our lives with everything related to the COVID-19 pandemic, and still we can be the center of God's plan. It's possible to live a godly life in an ungodly world like we Mary, part of God's plan to carry his light and love to the needy world. Each of us has been given different roles in his plan, but none are unimportant. It might be difficult to see ourselves as being active players in what God is doing in the world. It's not always easy to say yes to God. Saying yes can mean facing new challenges but God always provides the means for sustaining us as we carry out God's plans. When we present ourselves as God's servants, we're open to hearing what it is that God is asking of us. We will take our places in a long line of faithful people who have done just that. Then we'll find ourselves free to perform both small and large acts of compassion and care will be available for all adventures that God has in store for us for the work that he needs us to do each task fits into God's plans in ways that we can't always understand it matters less that we complete our tasks with expertise than we complete them with devotion God desires not the skills of our hands or the love but the love of our hearts. The person who has only the ability to love God and neighbor is an all-important in God's plan. Our confidence in the word of God will give us strength like Mary's confidence in God's word gave her strength. Because her whole identity was wrapped up in the promises of God, she was able to face her crisis with certainty. She gave everything to God. Our identity is wrapped up in the promises of God, so we can also face crises with certainty. The marks of greatness of God in his God's sight are the same marks of greatness that Jesus showed us. Humility, self-sacrifice, and total, total dependence on God. Mary showed these same marks of greatness, and she was rewarded by God. 
The only place of honor in God's kingdom is the place of service. God will reward us with the greatest gift anyone can give, either at Christmas or at any other time of the year, the gift of eternal life. Amen. Please stand and as we say the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We'll be using Prayers of the People, Form 3, found on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be departed from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for the unity of the Anglican Communion and the Episcopal Church. In the Anglican Communion, we pray for the Church of the Province of Central Africa. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, give thanks for Annunciation Luling and Grace Port Lavaca. We pray for our presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops David and Rayford, our priest Dexter, all diocesan seminarians. We pray for our political leaders our President Donald and our President-elect Joe. We pray for our Governor Greg. Lord, we ask for strength and healing for Allison, Tom, Joyce, Susie, Irene, Isabel, Karen, Anne, Rosalinda, Alberta, Ty, Clark, Sandra, Robert, Galena, Roberta, Roy, Lillian, Len, Marge, Lucy, Mike, Mandy, Robert, Ann, Jeff, Bobby, Pat, Don Rose. We pray for all of our military, both those far and away and here at home. But we pray especially for Haley, Abram, 
Victor, Nathan, and Chasey. We pray for persecuted Christians everywhere, especially Nigeria, Sudan, Egypt, Syria, Iraq, Kenya, and Sri Lanka. And we pray for our outreach ministries, Divine Food Pantry, Divine Hospice, Hank, Southwest Family Life Center, Military Ministry, and Mission Divine. Almighty God, who has promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in thy son's name, we beseech thee mercifully to incline that ear to us who now made our prayers and supplications unto thee, and grant that those things which we have faithfully, according to thy will, may be obtained effectively to relief of our necessity and to the setting forth of thy glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord be always with you also with you. Well, I'd like to welcome everyone that's with us this morning, and we have a lot of people <laughs> watching online. Um, I won't be able to get to everyone, but we do have Pat in New York, we have Ann in Connecticut, we have Catherine in Florida, Tanya and Julian in Florida, Angela in Indiana, Doug, Robert, and Sandra in Divine. We have O.T., Kenneth, and Tristan in uh, Lytle. We have Roy and Roberta in Natalia. We have Susan in San Antonio. We have Jenny in Divine and Gerald in Corpus. Welcome, everyone, to my first Holy Eucharist. Uh, for those of you um, that weren't able to join us, I was ordained into the priesthood on Wednesday. So I appreciate everyone's prayers for that. Um, we will be having a um, Christmas Eve service at 4 o'clock on, I believe, Thursday. That's Thursday. Okay. Uh, and then on Sunday will be lessons and carols. So looking forward to that. Any other announcements that you can think of in the back? Okay. So walk in love as Christ loved us and gave of himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Before we move to the table... I want to explain how we're going to share communion this morning with those of you at home. Our Holy Communion is this morning is a spiritual communion for those that are watching at home. We can't all be together because of the coronavirus, and so we can't all physically respond to an invitation to take the bread and the wine. But even when we are together, even when you can taste the bread and the wine that are the sacrament of our Lord Jesus' body and blood, our nourishment is always spiritual in nature. We feed by faith in our believing hearts, and from feeding in faith, the nourishment spreads to our whole lives, our whole selves. So after I invite you to receive the gifts of God for the people of God, I invite you to feed on Christ in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Then we will pray for those who will receive communion spiritually at home. All of us, those here in church, with me and with those at home, will pray together to receive the benefits of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus will come to us again as we open our hearts to receive him. After praying together with you, I'll present those here in the, um, those here in the church communion. And you can actually come forward one at a time.
The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to our Lord God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing the hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness of love for which you have made known in the creation and the calling of Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets and above all in world made flesh, Jesus, your son, for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate form of the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body and blood, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, proclaim his resurrection, and await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you for your creation this bread and wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that may be the sacrament and the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us into your Son in confidence that we may be acceptable through him, being sacrificed, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, we put things in subject, subjection under your Christ and bring us into the heavenly county where, with all your saints, we may enter the ever-living heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in honor and glory all yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Yeah. The gifts of God for the people of God.
page 365 let us say together eternal god heavenly father you have graciously accepted us as living members of your son our savior jesus christ you have fed us with a spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and signalness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn will be hymn number 437. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.